All right, guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack. And uh, <clears throat> I've got the bulk of the uh, build done on the enclosure here. Uh, all I'm really waiting on is the window to install. I've got the ventilation fan over there. I've got the ductwork over there. Uh, I've got my exterior ventilation flap coming. And I've got the uh, uh, plastic add-on to go that's going to connect it to the machine. Now, <clears throat> I have decided because I, I, it's hard for me to get away from the, the, the way that this uh, enclosure collects the smoke. And so I've come up with a, with a system that I'm going to try uh, of basically building uh, ductwork inside the machine so that I don't have just one single point for the air to be collected from. I don't know how effective that's going to be or whether I'm going to like it when I'm done with it, but that's the plan as of right now. I, I haven't worked out all the bugs of it. But as you can tell, uh, whew, definitely need some ventilation. I'm working on some ammo cans that, uh, that I'm doing for a wedding. And I know what you're thinking, ammo cans and a wedding, it, it really doesn't make sense, but it, it, it does in Alabama guys it does in Alabama and so I'm engraving the uh, the text in the sides of them it's gonna be uh, basically down to the metal and I'm probably gonna end up having to to coat them with something I had planned on trying to uh, mask them then engrave them and then paint through the masking but that turned into a nightmare and uh, that, that was a terrible idea so now I've got down to where I'm going to engrave them. I'm having to run two passes because I don't know what kind of uh, powder coat or whatever they use on these things, but man, they, they pour it to them. Uh, I did one earlier. I had to actually run it three times before I finally dialed in the right settings. Uh, luckily, I'm using my jig kit and I've got it set up. I've built me a jig file for these ammo cans so I know that if that ammo can is against that square and jig, if it's touching here and touching there, that it's gonna be exactly where I need it. And on this other can, I actually took it out, cleaned it and put it back three times <laughs> and uh, didn't, didn't get any shadowing or didn't get any offset in the image. So I was really proud of that. Uh, but let me, let me make sure that I point this out to you guys. I have actually started running I've got both of my machines set to where they automatically return after a job. Okay, the other machine, I've noticed a little bit of inconsistency sometimes with the home position depending on speed. So I've kind of stood it off away from the, uh, from the uh, switches on that one and I've went with like X3 and Y3 as my return to location in Lightburn. And that way I make sure that those uh, limit switches don't, don't push back on it and, and cause a, a, a variation. I like the limit switches because it keeps it from slamming into the rails, but by no means do I think the way that these limit switches operate, I, I don't think they're gonna be accurate enough for what I try to achieve. Uh, and what that is, is I jig stuff out when I make it. And so if I run a burn and the laser head returns to home, and then I take this ammo can out and I clean it and it's not how I want it. I want to be able to put that thing back in there exactly where it was by using that jig. And all I've got to do is hit start and rerun that same burn. And I did this other one. Like I said, this one here, let me close this so I don't get blinded guys. This one here, I actually had to run it. Like I said, I took it in and out like four times and uh, I, tr I tried running it on a, as a line. I tried running it as an engrave. I tried different power settings. And like I said, I'm running the 10 watt on these because I've got it uh, set up for, for legs. Let me put this guy over here on top of that where I can see if you can actually tell what it even looks like. Probably not. So let me try to, let me try to get this thing to focus, guys. I need a cameraman. I've been trying to teach Fluffy how to use a camera, but that ain't working. So the, uh, I don't even know if you can be able to make that out or not, but let me get a little closer. There we go. 
now you should be able to see it. So the text is, uh, it looks a little better in person, uh, honestly, than what it looks on the camera. Uh, but that is the best I can do. And I was asked if I could engrave these and my answer was I can try. And so I did one, took a picture of it, what it looked like and sent it to the customer. And I have a green light to do the rest of them. She said she actually likes it the way it looks. So we're gonna go with that. And I'm aware guys that this is probably gonna try to rust a little bit maybe, but I don't know what else I can do other than maybe spray this with some type of uh, clear coat or something like that. Because I tried dropping paint in the cut and I've tried masking them and it just, it's not gonna work. This is probably a job that would have been better suited for a cricket and a sticker. But anyway, it's on there now and it ain't going anywhere. All right, guys, got one hot out the oven. Uh, this ammo can that I just got through engraving, and I'm fixing to put another one in there and get it going. But in case you want to engrave ammo cans, and uh, you know, it's pretty neat that you can do it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is basically I'm going to give this guy the same treatment as I do my tumblers when I do them, and I'm going to be using rubbing alcohol and a magic eraser. And all I'm doing is I'm trying to get the soot out from inside there and make sure any of that little black sooty residue comes off, and it does. And then I'm just gonna go over that with a dry rag and try to get any, uh, any more of it off. Now, this is not stainless, so the engrave is not gonna pop and shine as much. Uh, it, it actually, stays relatively tame but it does it does add a little color to it and uh, it's very noticeable especially if you've got it sitting down to where you can uh, you got it sitting down to where you can kind of get off at an angle uh, there's still just a little bit of discoloration in the metal I ran that one over there like four times trying to get it to be shiny like my tumblers and it's just not happening uh, this grade steel is obviously not gonna shine up as much as the tumblers do. Uh, but you can get it to where it is noticeable. It contrasts pretty well with the, uh, with the OD green, but I don't, I, I don't see it ever being able to get it to the level of where the tumblers are. But it does look neat when you get done with it though. And I tried backfilling that with paint and guys, that was a, that was a disaster. I mean, a, a literal disaster. But there you go guys, that's, uh, that's what I'm working on tonight. All right guys, that one didn't turn out quite as uh, clean as I wanted it. So I'm putting it back on there, gonna run one more pass, but I wanted to take an opportunity to show you if I can get the camera to focus. That is how precise it is when you use a jig. You can see where I did the last burn, all right? And I took it off, and y'all saw me over here cleaning it. And I just didn't quite get, it just wasn't as clean as I wanted. And like I said, this is only the second one that I've done. I'm still kind of figuring the settings out. Uh, I ran two passes on the first go around, but this powder coating that they put on these things is ridiculous. So what I have done now is I went back, after I cleaned it, got all the soot off of it, I set it up to run one more pass. And regardless of how it comes out, this is gonna be the last pass. And then on the next one, what I'll do is I'm gonna set it up to run three passes just to see if I get the, uh, the, the look that I want. Uh, the, the metal turned out pretty good. I mean, if you look real close, you can see the reflection of the lights as they change in the metal but it had a little more uh, a little more green still in there that I didn't like. And so I put that thing on there and I'm running another pass just in the hopes that maybe it'll clean it up a little bit. And I'm gonna let you watch these letters because you saw it just start on this next row of letter in here. Uh, and the, uh, the whole process and using the jig and everything, this is why to me 
it is absolutely necessary. I know a lot of you guys, you know, you have your own way of doing things, and, and that's cool. Everybody, you know, has what works for them. But if you don't have a, uh, a method, then you may want to look at being able to, you know, because I jig everything, guys. If I'm doing more than one, or if it's something that's really important, I'm going to jig it and make that jig file and I'm gonna uh, and I'm gonna save it because in the event like with this with this thing here you know I, I thought I had it I thought I had it whooped got it over there went to cleaning it it wasn't exactly as clean as I wanted it and so luckily because I had jigged it and I had my my settings and everything still on the screen all I gotta do is lay it back up there and go at it again so just to give you an idea guys and uh, like I said trying to share with some of you you guys that are new at this because if, if, if I didn't have this jig set up, and let's say the first time that I took that off of there, it didn't go as deep as I wanted it to, then I'm stuck because if, without using jigs, there's no way in, I would ever dream of trying to put this thing back up there and start this burn again because you're either going to shadow it or you're going you're gonna to get it completely out of whack. I mean, at best case, you're going to shadow it. To where it looks like you have a shadow behind your uh, your original burn. Uh, I mean, the, so so this allows you to be able to go back and fix what otherwise would have been a mistake. Uh, because even though it wasn't as dark as I want it, now I'm going or wasn't as deep as I want it. I can go back over it now and make it even deeper. So just uh, just a little tip from the clack shack there, guys. All right, guys, I just wanted to drop in. Uh, I actually did get around to sweeping the floor in here, uh, did some more bug spraying, and I had to work on a uh, project that I've got going with epoxy, had to sand that thing down. I put another coat of epoxy on it, and I've got it in the kiln so that it can dry without getting cat footprints on it or bugs stuck to it or, or whatever. So uh, other than that, I didn't really have a whole lot going on today. I did have a lot of guys messaging me about the about the enclosure build and wanting the, the hardware as far as the hinges and the springs and all the parts that I use to make the door open and close the way it does. And uh, I went ahead and I looked up the parts list while I was working on these and letting these run. And I have dropped that in the description of yesterday's video. But I'll go ahead and uh, make this video tonight and I'll, I'll drop that parts list in there. Uh, they wanted, they asked for Amazon links to the parts, guys, but to be honest, save yourself some money. If you've got a tractor supply or if you've got a hardware store, you can go into those places a lot of times uh, and they have where you can buy one or two individual or you can go to, like, say, the bolt section at Tractor Supply. You can buy a pound of the stuff and it's like $3. So unless you just have no other choice, that's what I would recommend is to actually go into a tractor supply or a hardware store. Uh, you can take the list of what you need with you and find the parts that you need. And, you know, if you do it that way, you'll, you're looking at like 20, 25 bucks for the, for the hardware, maybe 30, depending on where you live and how the prices are. But uh, a lot of people have asked me also about being able to use this build been able to use this design for the uh, new lengthened machines. And other than the fact that it would make the uh, lid significantly heavier uh, to make it twice as long, I, I don't see why you couldn't. Uh, the only thing that you might would want to do if you did that, and, and I was thinking about that today because I had somebody ask me if I thought that it would work with the, the longer uh, lid so that they could put the longer machine in there. The only thing that I came up with that you might have to modify is it probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead. I, I would try the two springs and see if that was enough force to securely hold the lid back because what you don't want to do, guys, is get, you don't want this hitting you in the head and you don't want this slamming on your fingers. Uh, so you want to make sure that no, how, no matter how you build it, you want to make sure this lid is firmly back and is not going to fall. So what I recommend is when you build it, put the two springs on it, and if the springs, if the springs hold it securely, then that's great. If not, you've got a couple of options. I probably wouldn't go putting another uh, spring on here because you don't want to put too much force on these boards. 
But what you could do is go into the middle and line up with these two pins here and put another, you could put another spring in and run it towards the back of the machine. Now, the only downside to that is by doing that, when you lower the lid, that middle spring is going to be under pressure, which means that it is actually going to help you lift the lid, which is not a bad thing if the lid's real heavy. But once that spring gets up here and these other two springs help it, it would add a little bit more uh, resistance to keep it from coming back down on top of your head. So that would, uh, that would probably be what I would do if, 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 if I were going to do a long style, is I would go ahead and add an extra spring to it. You could even use one of the, uh, the little small shock absorbers, struts, that similar to what go on uh, like toolboxes or your car hood or whatever. You could use those, but in my experience, a $6 spring is a lot cheaper than those guys. They usually run $30 to $40 a piece. And, you know, I, I just, springs are cheaper. I, you know, if I, if I need to replace the spring, I think I paid like six, six bucks a piece, seven bucks a piece for those springs. So that's, that's some tips and some advice for tonight, guys. Uh, not a whole lot of other stuff going on. Like I said, I'm just going to sit here and let these guys finish on the ammo cans. And uh, I've got this other spring on the enclosure. I wanted everybody to be able to see that. I was able to go by and get the parts today. So as far as the physical build, I am where I'm going to be on that. Uh, I'm still waiting on ventilation, of course, and I wish I had it tonight. And I'm waiting on my uh, camera to come in. Uh, the camera for this job wasn't necessary. I built a jig to where I can use my squaring jig and just put those ammo cans in there and hit start and run one after the other. And it's been very accurate tonight, so I'm good on that part. But I am going to be putting a camera in that one that's going to be identical to the one in my other machine. So. But anyway, thanks for stopping by, guys. And I just want to drop in and, and, and tell you that <clears throat> and put that parts list out there for those of you that might be interested in the enclosure. And uh, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. I did hit the 3,000 uh, 3, subscriber obstacle that I had set. So now I've, 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 I've got to set another goal. So I'm going to try to make it to five by Christmas if I can. Uh, so we'll see, if, we'll see if that works out. And also, for those of you that appear... Uh, uh, that, that helped us with the uh, thing for Rustic Relics where you went and voted for them. I think that closed today. Uh, voting is no longer allowed, but the last count that I saw, Rustic Relics had twice as many votes as any, anybody else in the competition. So I appreciate the help that you guys gave us on that. I know uh, May May on her channel uh, asked for her folks to help. And between us and May May and the rest of the folks in Clanton, it looks like, unless there's something that I'm missing, Rustic Relics has uh, won that award. And so they'll be, I'm guessing, named uh, whatever they call it, top retail associate in the state, sometimes in the next little while. And I'll try to uh, get a little more information on that and pass it on to you so y'all can kind of share in the uh, accomplishment there. But I appreciate you and be safe and have a good day.